For too long we have been slaves to mass production. But no more, we live in an era where 3D printing makes it possible for us to build almost anything. Microcontrollers enable us to program electronics and the Internet and Creative Commons makes it possible for us to share our creations and build together based on our own desires in an open source environment. Imagine typing all your life on a QWERTY staggered keyboard and finding out this is not by far the best option for typing. The QWERTY layout was designed to prevent the type bars on the typewriters from jamming when typing too fast and not at all for typing efficiency. The staggered design was not created for efficiency either, nor for ergonomics. Originally, typewriters had a staggered layout to fit the mechanical linkage between the keys and the levers. Later on, the main reason industrial manufacturing went for staggered keyboards was that people were used to this type of arrangement even though the technology was not limited to it anymore. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max. I built my very own split keyboard and I have been using it for the past 3 weeks. I will share with you the whole build process, my experience using the keyboard and how it works considering it has only 26 keys. Before I go any further, I want to give you this warning. Building keyboards can be highly addictive. I've been warned and I didn't listen and now here I am, building keyboards, talking about keyboards, googling for keyboards and making plans for future keyboard related projects. You've been warned. This video goes hand in hand with a lot of information, 3D files, firmware files and other types of files that I cannot possibly share here. So check the description where I will add lots of useful links to other tutorials, 3D files for printing, firmware files but also make updates with additional information about the project if needed. Also you can leave me comments if you have any questions, advice or if you make improvements to this keyboard and wish to share them with us. The first thing that got me excited to build my own mechanical keyboard was their modularity and how customizable they are. You can change the keys to get different sounds when you push a button. You can change the keycaps to make them more colorful. You can organize the letters however you wish and you can even make your keyboard in any shape you think will suit your needs. There are endless possibilities. There are lots of models out there to choose from to buy or 3D models to download and build your own keyboard. From full keyboards to 60, 40 or even 20% keyboards. From one piece to split keyboards that come in different shapes and sizes. And since I decided to design my own model, I thought why not go for the weird and unusual, just to see what it's like and if it can be used daily. You never know until you try, right? I wanted something small that I can also take with me when traveling, but also functional, so it had to have all the letters, numbers and symbols a typical keyboard has. Another thing that left me amazed was the simplicity. For a simple keyboard all you need is a microcontroller, the buttons and some diodes. And to make it simpler I decided to get rid of the diodes altogether. That is also the main reason my keyboard has only 26 keys. You see, the number of buttons are dependent on the number of input pins you have on the controller. By using some diodes and arranging the buttons in a matrix, it is possible to use more buttons than the available pins on the controller. But the decision to build my keyboard without diodes limited the number of keys to the exact amount of pins on the microcontroller, which in my case is 26. I built the keyboard using the Node MCU ESP32 microcontroller and made my own firmware. But keep in mind that everything is a work in progress and could use some fine tuning. One important thing about the ESP32 is that 4 of the pins, 34, 35, 36 and 39 don't have internal pull up resistors, so I had to use 4 10K resistors to be able to use those pins. It took me a while to figure that out. That is why my first prototype had only 20 keys. I designed the case and the layout for the keys based more on how it feels rather than science. I wanted to feel comfortable using it and reduce the movement of the arms and fingers as much as possible. Two things that I managed to achieve well in my opinion by tilting the base keys at a 10 degrees angle and placing the thumb keys in reach. After printing the cases and giving them a bit of sanding and paint, I installed the buttons and connected each button to a designated signal pin on the controller. The second pin from all the buttons is connected to the ground pin on the controller. I used brown keys and keycaps from a used Red Dragon K556 mechanical keyboard that I bought specifically for this project. I chose to place the keycaps on the top row upside down to make it easier to push two buttons at once and you will understand why when you see the logic behind this keyboard. But first, I want to talk a bit about the firmware. 
As I said before, I made a firmware with my basic and rudimentary programming skills using the BLE keyboard library that was designed specifically for the ESP32 microcontroller and makes it into a Bluetooth keyboard, and the JC button library for debouncing the buttons. I used the Arduino IDE to program and upload the firmware. This is possible by updating the boards from Arduino's board manager. There are lots of great open source firmwares that you can download and customize for your own keyboard layout, but most of them are not compatible with this microcontroller, and also what I found seemed a bit complicated for my project. And we are finally getting to the best part of the video. How does it work with only 26 keys? Well, like most small keyboards it uses layers, but also button combinations. In case you are wondering how layers work, I can confidently say that you already know. The shift key is a layer changer. When you press it, your keyboard shifts onto another layer that makes small letters into capital letters and numbers into symbols. Another layer changer is the function key on your laptop that changes the behavior of the keys. This keyboard can do the same, but by having two function keys, it is able to switch between four layers. The button combinations help me use more letters on one layer by pressing two buttons at the same time. For example, when I press this button, I get the letter A. If I press this button, I get the letter C. But if I press both of them at the same time, I get the letter B. It's like having a third button without actually having one. So, on the first layer I have all the letters, the second layer has the numbers and the math symbols, and to make things easier I added the secondary symbols in between the lines so I don't have to use the shift key. The third layer is for navigation with the arrow keys, page up, page down, home, and insert, delete, volume control, tab and caps look, the windows button and the button that opens a window of my computer. The last layer is for the F keys and some punctuation symbols. The layers can be momentary and only stay on a certain layer while the specific function key is pressed, or I can lock onto a certain layer by pressing the escape and control at once. Because I only have 4 fingers for the main buttons but 5 columns of buttons, I decided to make the extremities fixed keys that will remain the same on all layers. So I placed escape and control on the left hand and backspace and enter on the right hand. The keys for the thumbs are also permanent on all layers. And this is the subscribe button. As far as my experience goes, I can definitely tell you that building this keyboard was a fun and rewarding project. I also learned lots of things. The brain is highly adaptable. It's amazing how fast I got used to using this keyboard. Another thing I learned is that I can't type fast if my life depended on it. I'm spending very little time typing so my abilities of fast typing are limited to 30 words per minute. So I'm not the best person to make an accurate comparison between this keyboard and a normal one. Also not the best person to make any analysis on long term use benefits. I can also say that I don't miss my old keyboard at all. I'm Max from Lifehacker Max and I hope you found this video useful or at least enjoyable. And if you did, please consider becoming a Patreon so I can keep on making awesome videos. Thank you for watching.